here we go for a race to the finish. Um, we've got 15 problems left. Uh, they do get... Eh, some of these are pretty challenging. Um, some of these are a little easier than others. Um, by the way, I noticed that problem number 42 in our last video was actually a problem only 16% of people got right. Um, so it was kind of a doozy. Anyway, we are uh, going through the 2005 macroeconomics test. Um, if you are following along, I suggest, again, do the problems. You know, When we read a problem, pause it, see if you can answer it, and then um, go on and watch the rest of the video to hear my ramblings about how I would think through the problem, and hopefully that will help you uh, kind of process these problems and answer them when the AP test comes along. Here we go. Uh, number 46. Which of the following events will most likely cause an increase in both the price level and real GDP? All right, so you pause it, you came back, um, you're sitting on pins and needles. I feel like I've drawn this graph too many times, but we'll start where we left off, aggregate demand, aggregate supply. Um, and of course, that's price level and real GDP. Um, so we want something that's going to increase both price level and regional GDP. Well, the way to do that would be an increase in aggregate demand. So the question is, which of these will increase aggregate demand? Um, if the prime rate, that's an interest rate, if that increases, um, that's going to make it harder to borrow money. No, I don't like that. If exports increase, well... Exports are actually part of aggregate demand. It means the world will be buying more of our stuff. Yeah, if those increase, that should increase aggregate demand. Um, if income taxes increases, no, that's going to decrease demand. If crude oil increases, that'll decrease uh, aggregate supply. And um, lastly, if inflationary expectations decrease, no. Um, so yeah, exports increase, that will increase aggregate demand. 47. See how fast we can do these. Which of the best explains why transfer payments are not included in the calculation of GDP, gross domestic product? Pause. Read your answers. Okay. I'm assuming you're back. Um, so why don't we include transfer payments? Well, my general rule of thumb is for something to be counted in GDP, um, something... Something needs to be produced. Transfer payments are used to pay for intermediate goods? No. Transfer payments are things like Social Security, um, where nothing is being produced. Transfer payments are government expenditure. No, government expenditures can be counted if they're buying, like, new tanks. Recipients of transfer payments have not produced or supplied goods and services. Yeah, that's right. If nothing is being produced, we don't count it. Um... No, and uh, recipients of transparency are not. No, neither of those. Moving on. 48. Suppose a typical consumer buys the following quantities of three commodities in 93 and 94. Which of the following can be concluded about the CPI for this individual uh, from 93 to 94? So a good practice problem, by the way. Um, well, to figure to figure out CPI, remember we use we're looking at the change in price. So we use the same market basket of goods. We'd we'd keep the same quantities and then see how much the price has changed. So I'm going to do five times six is thirty. Two times seven is fourteen. Three times twelve is thirty-six. So 30 plus 14 is 44, plus 36 is 80. I'm going with 80. Uh, if we use the same quantities, 5 times 5 is 25, 2 times 9 is 18, and 3 times 19 is... Oh boy, that's hard. 30, 57. Alright, 25 plus... 18 plus, uh, let's see, so 15 carried to 2, uh, 2 plus, shit, uh, I got 100.
Good. Um, so then the prices are the CPI. Um, well, I could say that the prices have increased by 25%. We went from 80 to 100. So 100 minus 80 over 80. Last I checked, that is 0.25 or 25%. I'm going to go with a prices increased by 25%. 49. If, a, if an economy's aggregate supply curve is upward sloping, an increase in government spending will most likely result in a decrease in... Well, all right. The aggregate supply curve is upward sloping. Yeah, it normally is. Uh, sometimes there are flat sections on it, though. Uh, we'll draw on our aggregate demand. If we have an increase in government spending, aggregate demand is shifting up, shifting out, shifting rightward is probably the best way to say it. So price level is going up, and total output is going up. OK, so what's going to decrease? Uh, output actually increased, so no. Price level increased, so no. Interest rates, uh, let me come back to that one. Um, unemployment rate. Oh yeah, if we have an increase in output, that means we're probably going to have more people working, so a decrease in the unemployment rate. I kind of like that one. Uh, so I'm going to actually stick with that one and move on. Oh yeah, you'd actually probably have an increase in deficit because of that increase in government spending. Number 50. An increase in which of the following is consistent with an outward shift of the production possibilities curve? Um, oops. So we're talking about there's the production possibilities curve. What's going to get us to be able to produce more of everything? Um... Transfer payments don't allow us to produce more. Uh, shifts in... I guess uh, aggregate demand, if we have more aggregate demand, that's not pushing out that that long-run aggregate supply, so it doesn't increase our potential. Actually, there it is. Long-run aggregate supply. Uh, the long-run aggregate supply is, our, is at our potential GDP, so an increase in our... Um, an outward shift of the production possibilities is is an increase in the long run aggregate supply. So yeah, let's stick with that. C. Uh, Fifty one. An increase in which of the following will lead to lower inflation and lower unemployment. All right. Um, well, let's see. We want lower inflation and lower unemployment. I feel like I've drawn this graph too many times. Um, if we have an increase in exports, that's going to increase aggregate demand. And that drives price levels up. And then if we have an increase in aggregate demand, that's the same thing. If we have an increase in labor productivity, that should make it easier and cheaper to supply goods an increase in supply, that actually is going to drive down the price level and increase output which should drive down lower or down the unemployment, so lower unemployment. I like C. Yeah, government spending is aggregate demand again um, and the international value of domestic currency, no that's not going to lead, that's going to affect aggregate demand again. 52. An unanticipated decrease in aggregate demand when the economy is in equilibrium will result in... Uh, let's see, if aggregate demand goes down, we're going to be going into a recession. That's not going to decrease voluntary unemployment. A decrease in the natural... No, the natural rate always stays the same. And natural rate of unemployment is that frictional and structural. Uh, a decrease in aggregate... No, it's, we'll have a... Let's see. We'd have a shift along the aggregate supply curve, but not a shift of the aggregate supply curve. 
Um, an increase in unplanned inventories. Okay, so we've got less demand, and it was unanticipated. Yeah, so I would have had a lot of inventory on hand, and now all of a sudden I don't need it, so I would have that increase in unplanned inventories, which would force me to drop my prices, driving price levels down. That makes sense. Um, and no, if we dropped aggregate demand, that would actually lower price levels, and so no, that would not increase inflation, that'd probably decrease it. 53. Uh, which of the following would be true if the actual rate of inflation were less than the expected rate of inflation? All right. Um, inflation. Uh, which of the following would be true if the actual inf rate of inflation were less than the expected rate of inflation? Um, inflation had been under predicted. No, it was actually over predicted, wasn't it? We predicted it'd be higher than. Yeah, we predicted the the predicted rate was higher than what it actually was. Uh, B, the real interest rate had exceeded the nominal interest rate. Um, I gotta think about that. Real interest rate had exceeded the nominal interest rate. Well, the real interest rate is the nominal minus inflation. So if inflation were less, no, real interest rate is, is it didn't say real interest, uh, infl it wasn't deflation, so no, that's not true. Okay, the real interest rate had been negative. Uh, not necessarily, no. Uh, the people who borrowed funds at the nominal interest rate during this period would lose. Uh, let's see. If they borrowed it at the nominal interest rate, so they borrowed it at a set interest rate, and now they have to pay it back with dollars that are more valuable than they expected them to be, yeah, they would be losing out. So I like D. What about E? Uh, the economy would expand because of the increased investment and in spending. Um, I don't think so. I, I, I like D there, so I'm going to stick with D, and I'll check the answer in a second here. Yes, indeed, that is right. D was the correct answer. Uh, 54. If the Federal Reserve institutes a policy to reduce inflation... By the way, that previous question was like another one of those 33% questions. But anyway, I digress. Uh, 54. If the Federal Reserve institutes a policy to reduce inflation, which of the following is most is most likely to increase? Um, okay. Well, tax rates are not going to... I mean, that's Congress. Those, so just because the Fed tries to reduce inflation, that's not going to have any effect there. Um... And I suppose they would be doing it by doing contractionary monetary policy. So if they're doing contractionary monetary policy, money supply is going to be decreasing, so interest rates will actually be increasing. So um, if interest rates are going up, no investment won't go. Government spending, again, that's Congress. Interest rates will increase. GDP will probably decrease. That's how we're going to drive down that uh, that price level and keep inflation under control. Cool. Uh, 55. To stimulate investment in new plant and equipment without increasing the level of real output, the best policy mix. Oh. All right, so we want to stimulate investment. I think this one might have been... I might have borrowed this one for our test. <laughs> anyway... Um, if we want investment, we want to people to be borrowing money. So we want to uh, increase the money supply. So I'm not going to decrease the money supply. It has nothing to do with government spending and taxes there. Um, and then I would need to... Alright, so if I did that... Let's see, if I 
Simulated investment by uh, increasing the money supply. That would increase aggregate demand, but that would also increase output and price level if I want to help when I need some contractionary fiscal policy. So, uh, yeah, I'll decrease government spending. If I decrease uh, income taxes, that would just push me further out. So, no, I'll go with B. All right, couple to go. 56. Assume that the reserve requirement is 20%, but banks volunteer, voluntarily keep some excess reserves. A $1 million increase in new reserves will result in... Hmm. All right, well, let's... I'll give you a second to think about that one, because i got to think about it myself. Um... But I guess the first thing I would do is the money multiplier equals 1 over 0.2, so it equals 5. So $1 million could result in up to $5 million in, um, in, in the money supply. So no, it's not going to be a decrease in the money supply. Um, and it's either going to be an increase in the money supply of $5 million, or of less than five million, um, I guess the total it could possibly be would be five million. But it's saying that banks are voluntarily keeping some excess reserves, so it's not going to go to the full amount that it could. I'm going to go with B. Let me check the answer on that. Yes, it is B. Uh, 57. Assume that a perfectly competitive financial market for loanable funds is in equilibrium. Which of the following is most likely to occur to the quantity demanded and quantity supplied of loanable funds if the government imposes an effective interest rate ceiling? Oh man, I feel like I'm back in micro here. Alright. I assume you paused it and you're ready for the answer. So we're in loanable funds, so demand for loanable funds and supply of loanable funds. Um, Alright, and it said we were we were in equilibrium, and now we're going to put in a price ceiling, and it's got to be effective. So a price ceiling won't let us get up to the equilibrium. There's my ceiling. It's kind of funny because the ceiling is below the equilibrium, but it, the idea is it's not going to get up to that that equilibrium. Um, if I put the ceiling up here, it wouldn't really have any effect. So, um, all right, so we put that in there. So the quantity, we were here at this point here, and so now the quantity demanded is actually increasing, right? Because we were demanding this amount. Let's see if I can even draw it. Now we're demanding this amount, so that's an increase. And the quantity supplied, while well, we were supplying that amount, now we're seeing a decrease in the quantity supplied and uh, yeah we actually have a shortage there more demanded than there is supplied number 58 um, if the economy is operating at full employment and there is substantial increase in the money supply the quantity theory of money predicts that an increase in All right, here's the answer. If we have a increase in the money supply, then in the long run, the only thing, because, uh, and that's kind of the whole idea of the, the quantity theory, is that in the long run, well, we're going to be producing at full employment, so the only thing that we can actually increase is the price level. I'm going to go with E, the price level. Wow, I'm getting tired. Two to go. Which of the following would cause the United States dollar to increase in value compared to the Japanese yen? All right, let's draw a... I'm kind of out of space. Shoot. I'll draw it up here. Here we go. So this is, we'll say, quantity of dollars and the, how many yen per dollar. We got a demand and a supply. So we want something that is going to um, 
Which of the following would cause the United States dollar, the exchange rate, to increase? Well, it looks like either an increase in the demand for dollars or a decrease in the supply of dollars. Um, so no, I don't think an increase in the money supply in the United States would increase the value. No. An increase in interest rates in the United States. Uh, yeah, if interest rates are high in the U.S., then people want to invest in the U.S., because they can earn a lot of money on their interest, and so they need U.S. dollars. I like that answer. How about the others? An increase in the United States trade deficit with Japan. Well, that means we need more Japanese yen, and we need to get rid of more of our dollars, so the supply of dollars is going up. That's not it. The United States purchases purchase of gold on the open market. Um, that's going to increase the supply of dollars to be able to purchase gold, so no, that's not going to do it. Uh, the sale of $2 billion worth of Japanese televisions. Uh, again, then we're going to need to get rid of our dollars to get the yen, and so the supply is going up. No, that's not what we want. So yeah, we'll go with B. Last one. Assume the supply of loanable funds increases in country X. Um, the international value of country X's currency and country X's exports will likely change in which of the following ways? Oh, I like this problem more than I should. I'm a dork, but this is a fun one to end on. So we're looking at loanable funds market. This is the quantity of... Oops, there we go. And we got a demand for loanable funds, and we got a supply of loanable funds, and this is the real interest rate. Rrr. Um, then we had an interest rate. And what happened? Soon the supply of loanable funds increased. Uh, I wrote ER as an exchange rate. This IR as an interest rate. Sorry. Um, looks like the interest rate is going to drop. Mm, if interest rates are dropping, then in X dollars... I gotta draw it again, demand, supply. Now I can draw my exchange rate. Um, if the ex if the value, sorry, if the interest rate is dropping, we aren't gonna want as many country X dollars. Demand will decrease. The value of that dollar will decrease. The international value will decrease. And of course, if the value of that dollar is weak, well, that actually makes your the goods you produce in country X a little bit cheaper and so they'll actually be able to um, export a little bit more so their exports will actually increase B there you go I think I did all these correctly I tried to double check my answers as I was going along um, I hope that you find this at least somewhat valuable just kind of my thinking through it obviously some of the problems are are, are, are a bit confusing and um, and, and you saw me, if you were watching carefully, I stumbled over a few of them, um, although I was able to at least normally reason it down to a couple couple uh, options. Um, hope this helps. Um, I hope you do well on your AP test. Thanks for watching.